Well, good afternoon. They turned the lights on. I assume that means it's time to start. Uh, welcome you to the May 22nd meeting of the Oklahoma City Riverfront Redevelopment Authority. I'll call the meeting to order, and the first item is items two. Items from the chairman. We have two recommendations on here today, and both of these are going to be struck. It's my understanding that the staff has been contacted by the promoter, and he's decided not to pursue that this calendar year. So uh, uh, we'll, we'll go. That ahead is up. correct. So we have not had a committee meeting on this, and we will look forward to them coming back next year. I need a motion to strike item A. So moved. Second. After your votes, it passes. I need a motion to strike item B. So moved. Second. After your vote, it passes. Item three is the minutes from the April 24th meeting. Do we have any changes or corrections? Second. Cast your vote. It passes unanimously. Item four is the consent docket. We have the oil and gas revenue report and the uh, river corridor events update. Do we have any questions on either one? Move approval of both items. Second. Cast your vote. It passes unanimously. Item five is the primary agenda items. Item A is to receive the Oklahoma River Maintenance Projects update. Jim, Welcome. I'm Jim Llewellyn, Open City Public Works. Um, our dredging contract is scheduled to open bids on it tomorrow. Uh, we had a lot of interest in the pre-bid meeting, so we're hoping to get some good bids on that. Um, that'll be for dredging the sedimentation basin, and then we have some quantities in there for dredging the other river basins also. Um, we've budgeted $1.5 million for dredging this year. Um, we'd intended to have the DMO 409, the channel cleaning maintenance, which is the mowing contract for the uh, river east of the eastern dam on the docket, but uh, it didn't make it, so it'll probably be on June 5th or 6th, whichever one's coming up. Um, our SCADA, we've had some minor repairs, uh, but basically everything's operating all right. We've been doing some updates. Um, Installed a new SCADA computer at the river maintenance facility, so we have a second point of operation. Um, on our debris removal, um, this last month they pulled about 31.5 tons of debris out of the river, primarily floatables again. Um, after these rains we've been getting, we are getting some uh, tree limbs and things like that, other types of debris down there, but it's still been pretty slow since we haven't had a lot of rain this spring. Is there any questions? Jim, what did we pay for dredging last year, roughly? Is it in that same 1.5 range? Or? We hadn't um, <clears throat> had a dredging contract in effect for about three years. Uh, before that, we were spending about a half million dollars a year. Okay. We're hoping this will get us caught up on the basin, get it pretty well emptied. And then right now, we've looked at budgeting going back to a half million dollars a year for dredging. Okay. This contract we're about to award is, it, it'll be an annual contract. It's renewable. so. Any other questions? Thank Any you other much. questions? Any motion to receive that report? Second. Second. Yes, you vote. Passes unanimous. Thank you. Item B is to receive the report from on the annual meeting of the Oklahoma River Stakeholder Group. Doug. Good afternoon, River Trust. Doug Copper, Parks and Recreation. Uh, you have a pretty complete report of the stakeholders. A lot of you were in attendance at that stakeholders meeting that we held uh, this uh, past few weeks. Uh, I think there was some uh, a lot of good dialogue. There's a lot of interesting things that are happening uh, through our stakeholders. Uh, ob obviously, the Wheeler District and the Humphreys uh, report was uh, quite intriguing about some of the things that they've been able to accomplish so far uh, on their lands. Uh, we were intrigued with uh, the activities that the, the uh, Friends of the Oklahoma River have started. Uh, we want to make sure that we keep an eye on that group and, and we are encouraged them to have more dialogue with uh, Mike Knopp and, and uh, um, trust member uh, Ms. Salyer uh, reminded the group that, that the uh, specific Friends of the River has been claimed by the Boathouse District in previous uh, enterprises that they've done. So. Some work still has to be done, but uh, I think it's uh, 
his attitude's in the right place. He just wants to help, and I think we can make that work out really well. And, and I think the final thing was the uh, uh, Rhonda Hooper was there for the equestrian uh, group and, and uh, the dialogue and the, and the hopes that they have for the equestrian park uh, are moving, still moving forward. They're a little slow, but, but uh, they have a lot of good ideas, and, and they hope to be able to springboard the activities that the uh, um, Public Utilities is doing there at, the, at River Park, and, uh, of course, then Public Works putting a new driveway in and resurfacing the parking lot and doing at least the first third of the east-west parking lot there to accommodate that. And uh, we've been in communications with Jason and, and Jeannie about uh, a possible boat landing in the future at the equestrian park and uh, how we're going to move forward with that activity as well. Obviously, to get their grants and things along those lines, it has to be more of a destination and not just a parking lot. So getting some equestrian activities in there will be helpful. My staff is prepared as soon as the water and sewer is in place, we will build a corral. It won't be the ultimate corral, and we will put in a uh, watering trough system in there so that as the word gets out in the horse community that uh, we have amenities there, uh, people should be able to start using it even more than they are now. But other than that, I'd be happy to answer any other questions. Doug, how was your innovation lab? I'm sorry? How was your innovation lab? Uh, it, uh, the, uh, the NRPA, the National Recreation Park Association, was in town last week. It's the first time the national organization has even considered bringing anything to Oklahoma City. It was four years in the making on my part to convince them that we had a story to tell. And, and uh, they actually, when they left, the uh, CEO, president of NRPA, came up to me and said that it was the best-run innovation lab they have had, and they've had about uh, 10 of them so far over the last two, three years. So, so uh, very exciting. Uh, Mayor Cornett and, and city manager uh, Couch kicked it all off last Thursday morning with the complete history and story of maps one, two, and three, and uh, it intrigued them. A lot of uh, the director of the, the general manager of the Los Angeles, city of Los Angeles Parks and Recreation Department was here. And he has learned from me over the last three years about maps, and they have springboarded and they created their own maps program in LA to help boost their, their park system. So, so um, having being here and listening to the mayor and the city manager talk about it, and then that afternoon we had business leaders uh, talk about what it meant from an economic development and why businesses see the reality of what a quality place we have here that we call Oklahoma City. So thank you for asking. It was a great activity. Uh, I don't think I want to do it again. I'm wore out, so. Any other questions? Thanks, Doug. I need a motion to receive that report. There he is. I'm sorry. Yeah, question, uh, Gary. And in, in your report, un, under the Friends of Oklahoma River, okay, one of the things uh, that uh, that they evidently have is they want to attract diverse users for the Oklahoma River. Are we in a position to oversee the meaning of diverse users so we all go in a consistent direction, or is there a possibility that we'll be going in different directions? Well, I think in, in, in this nomenclature, what he's uh, uh, um, alluding to is not just bikers and walkers, but people that his idea is to place art on the river along the trail system. He wants to get other people that wouldn't normally use the river for exercise purposes to use the river corridor for, for viewing uh, places of, of high-end art. That, that's what he's talking about, diversifying the users, not necessarily ethnic or gender or social economic. It's just other ways to enjoy the river corridor other than biking are running. Well, the thing that concerns me is uh, we have some, we had some activity going on, I guess, in the far eastern portion of the river uh, for the last several years that maybe was kind of, in our mind, might have been counterproductive to what we'd like to see the river used for. Are we in a position to make sure that that doesn't keep going on? Well, yeah, that, that's been our task to make sure those, those uh, non-positive activities are no longer operating on, on the river corridor. So um, 
your, your trust specialists and our grounds maintenance superintendent have mapped out all the illegal dumping that has occurred. We've mapped out where, uh, and we've worked with the police department. David's worked with the police department. We've got a lot more signs out there about uh, being public space, being public lands, no, no dumping, no illegal vehicles and things along those lines. So whether we'll ever at, get a complete control on it until we get a lot more positive activities happening on the whole corridor, um, th those kind of elements will still pop up, unfortunately, as, as it does in all of our park systems. Any other questions? Can I get a motion? I need a motion. Second. Cast your vote. Pass your name, sir. Okay, item C. Oops. Item C is some good news. We have received, uh, COP has received some grant money to do some work on a river, and I asked staff to do a presentation of what that's going to do. Gene? Yes. <clears> okay, <throat> hey, so this is from the FTA website, their uh, announcement of our uh, grant. Uh, basically, it was a $58.2 million in available funding for urbanized ferry operations, passenger ferry only. <clears throat> they awarded to 20 projects in 12 states. It's two years' worth of funding for the FTA. The previous two years were uh, years 15 and 16. They combined a lot of those funds went to some of the larger uh, ferry operations. I, I noticed in this particular group of ferry operators, there were a lot of uh, tourist type ferries, Staten Island, uh, you know, some, some of those. So I'm, I'm sure that's quite, quite the reason we fit into this particular package. And the federal share is 80% uh, of uh, the local share is 20% and um, our, the entire grant includes, is all inclusive. It's the design, the construction, every, every aspect of each one of these projects. Though we did use some um, previous estimates for each of these areas because these are badly needed things uh, that we need on the river for our operation. <clears throat> so this is the list of projects. The first two are, are security related. Um, and I'll go through each one of these one at a time if I go the right direction. OK, security cameras at the main terminal. Uh, we budgeted $10,000 for that. Um, the archiver that we have currently is about eight years old. It's um, mostly functional most of the time, but there's some better technology out there that we'd like to use, uh, perhaps, perhaps some additional cameras to cover more of the area. This will provide more security for the crew, the passengers, and people in the surrounding area. And all of this archived information goes directly to the police department. We do not own it as COTPA. They own it. So this, uh, this is very helpful when there is an incident. I can go back. I can look through it. I cannot grab it or copy it. I can notify the police department. Here's the date and time you need to look at. And uh, with four robberies last year, uh, they were actually able to help us out with a couple of those. <clears throat> so we're, we're looking forward to getting an upgrade on that. Security cameras on the vessels. We did this many years ago, back when we first started. Uh, there's a video screen, there's a place for a video screen in the wheelhouse where the captain can see the activity going on in the cabin. As you, as you know, the, the head is right behind him, he can't see what's going on. The deckhand is back there by himself with uh, the passengers. This is usually not a, a problem until you have a, a kind of a wild charter going on. Some of you have had those, I'm sure. And, <laughs> And um, the deckhand has to control the situation. Uh, this way the captain can see what's going on. Also, if the deckhand has to step off the vessel to secure it. So we've had some people slip behind the bar and get some, some extra concessions out of there. This will prevent that. So we're looking forward to this type of upgrade. It's about $2,700 per vessel. The, our terminal at exchange, it's a very steep incline down to the riprap and then to the dock, and then there's a switchback walkway uh, to make it ADA compliant, but also to make it convenient uh, for rolling carts down there for concessions and whatnot. Being such a steep grade, it tends to wash out beneath that ramp. 
It also tends to wash mud onto the ramp, which the HMS crew has to constantly maintain. So our goal here is to take $70,000, which is based on a couple of estimates that we got from some landscapers, to shore up that uh, bank, do some bank stabilization, some cleaning up, uh, maybe some French drains, a few things like that to try and control that erosion, and at the same time make it a little more attractive. Rudy and Landing Pavilion, this rendering is actually from, I believe, 2011. <clears throat> we don't anticipate being able to create all of this, but we certainly need some sort of cover. Uh, several years ago, USA Shade provided us with a canopy, which has held up remarkably well and does provide some shade, but it, we believe it's time for an upgrade. So we've requested $400,000 uh, to put in a little more permanent structure and some seating, uh, some bike racks, a few things like that to, to dress this up quite a bit. With all those beautiful new hotels right next door, we're hoping to be able to attract more riders if we have a more attractive la landing. Can you set a restroom also? There was a restroom in the original design. We would prefer not to. Uh, that's just one more thing to maintain, which ups the costs. Uh, there's security issues. Uh, so we probably will not do that unless, you know, there's a absolutely required. With hotels, I mean, the hotels are right there. It for 10 years, nobody's there. asked for a restroom yeah. out there. <laughs> so, yes. Okay, the, the largest part, part of the project is $1 million that we're, we've requested and been awarded for River Park Landing. Uh, this drawing is based on a drawing by Triad Design Group. Uh, when we made our, our uh, grant application, when I put together a grant application, I went by that particular uh, rendering and the estimates that they were given. This will, of course, need some redesign, but we do have a million dollars to work with to put in a landing there so that we can, um, we can service that area as it becomes more productive. Part of our initial estimates included the parking lot. Um, obviously, that's being taken care of. Uh, but again, there's also inflationary costs to take into consideration. So uh, anyway, with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. A couple of comments. I am singing. I mean, I, I have wanted to do this since before I got on the council <laughs> nine and a half years ago. It's incredibly exciting. Thank you for your perseverance. And um, my question, I guess, is this the first public announcement, or do the folks at Stockyards know yet? I imagine they do. I, I, under, I was telling uh, Mr. Clowers about it a, almost a week ago, and he informed me that he had already informed Chairman Mars. So it's a question for Chairman Mars. Has the word gotten out? Yeah. Do they know down at Stockyards? Do they have what? Do they know at Stockyards, Gary? Do the, does the Stockyards Main Street group know that this has been funded? or? I, not that I'm aware of. Okay. okay. Well, I think we ought to do something pretty special to let them know. Um, maybe, Jeannie, if you came to their next, they have something called um, Mornings on Main Street. You know, maybe come to their next morning, or maybe we should invite them down here. I mean, this is something that Chairman Nork and, you know, all have been working on since we started talking about the river. I, th I think the landing at the stockyards was perceived to be perhaps the very first dock we would ever have. Yes. And, you know, we're this much along. But it's a huge, huge step. And I really would like to recognize everybody that's worked on it and do something special. We'll make sure that that happens. Great. Any other questions? Well, Second. Well, it is exciting news. We're, we're happy to see it. And it passes unanimously. Item D is a resolution approving uh, our participation by $25,000 in the a sales and marketing plan for the cruisers. This is an annual budget item that we have. Any questions? Move approval. Second. Cast your vote. It passes unanimously. Item E is to recommend that the City Council approve a revocable permit for the Boathouse Foundation Stars and Stripes River Festival on June 23rd. Any questions? 
Yes, you vote. We we'll pass it unanimously. Item F is uh, one of the items we need to strike. I need a motion to strike. Yeah, it's uh, the promoter has decided not to do that this year, not to pursue it in this year. So uh, we're, we're striking these items. Yeah. Cast your vote. Passes unanimously. And uh, item G, same thing. Cast your vote. Passes unanimously. We have a claims. Moving on to item uh, seven, additional item, uh, comments by staff. Anything, Doug, other than your uh, written report? No, sir, nothing else to report. Any questions on the written report? Motion to approve it, uh, receive that. It passes unanimously. Any comments from trustees? Mike, how'd the weekend go? Yeah. Um, we had a very diverse set of activities going on with the Red Bull Pump Track World Championship Qualifier, the Boater Cross, the U.S. Olympic uh, uh, Olympic, uh, Olympic Scouting Camp. Um, just tremendous comment, comments. People from all over the country came. Um, so uh, we, were, we were very, very pleased. The U.S. Olympic Committee was very pleased with, uh, with this is the first one they've done, and so they want to come back and do that again. And, um, but we had big crowds and a lot of fun. So it was great. Very unique, uh, like I said, to have these, uh, these uh, we had some Olympians, uh, BMX riders who switched over to the pump track who were, uh, who were there, and that was the first ever event of its kind. So um, it was pretty. It was pretty spectacular to watch. And then the, the boater cross uh, saw boats falling about 10 feet into the water and racing, and um, that was very exciting too. Lots, a lot of, fun, a lot of fun at the river. So did we get yeah. a lot of athletes turn out for the tryouts? Uh, you know, we had. I think it was about 40. I mean, okay. they were good athletes. I mean, I think it's first year event, but they were they were very pleased with that who they saw. So we'll. We'll see how that how that evolves. So. Great, thank you. All right, thank you. Any other comments from trustees? Any citizens to be heard? I don't think we have any non-employee citizens in the room, do we? All right, thank you. We are adjourned.